How easy is it to spot content that's been created with the help of AI? Well, in a previous video, that one, I asked you guys via a survey whether you could spot an AI article. I had two articles, one human, one AI, and basically the results said that it's actually pretty difficult to spot AI um, because the majority of you got it wrong. But now there could be a solution. There's a whole load of new tools that have become available that basically promise and claim that they can detect AI content. You simply copy and paste your content into them and give them a couple of seconds, and they give you a percentage in terms of how much the article is AI and how much of it is human. But do these tools actually work? Do we need them? Does it matter if your content's AI? Well, there's some big questions and I'm gonna be exploring them towards the end of this video. But before then, I've got eight bits of content, two of which are human, six of which have been created using various AI tools. And I'm gonna run them through some of these checkers. I've got four checkers that we're gonna be trying out to find out if they do work and you know whether they're any good. So let's get started. Hello, it's Alex here, hope you're all well. Before we get started, could you just quickly click the like button for me down below? Really help me out that would from an algorithmic point of view. I'd really appreciate it, thanks very much if you do. So I've got four tools that I'm gonna be trying out today that claim that they can detect AI content. The first one is originality.ai, which is a paid for tool, but it's also got a built-in plagiarism detector. So that's pretty cool. It'll let you know if the content is both AI and or copied. The second tool I've got is a free one. And this one is from the guys over at Content at Scale which by the way, I'm also gonna be trying their tool out to create some content, but yeah, that's a free tool. And by the way, you'll find links to all of the things I'm talking about below, all the tools, all the articles, and all that kind of stuff. Some of those links may be affiliate links, so if you use them and buy something, I really appreciate it. The third tool is another free one, which is available from the guys at crossplag.com. And the final one I'm gonna be using is from uh, sapling.ai, and again, it's a free one. You'll find links to them all below. So as I said, I've got eight articles, uh, basically four from the popcorn niche and four from the darts niche, which are obviously both niches that I've got websites in. Uh, out of the four articles, one is human and three are AI. The AI tools that I've used to create the articles are ChatGPT, which of course is free, but there is a paid version available now. The second is Jasper.ai, which is a paid for tool, but it's also one of my favorites. I've got tons of videos on the channel about Jasper, do go check those out. And the third one is from Content at Scale, which is kind of like a bulk publishing AI tool, which again, I've done some videos on. You'll find links to all of those things below. So first off, let's start in the popcorn niche. And the article that we're using today is, Can Alpacas Eat Popcorn? Um, and if you're wondering, not really. Uh, Only give them a little bit of popcorn, otherwise they're gonna get a bit poorly. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the human article. So this one was written by uh, my writers and yeah, it's 100% human. If you take a look at it, you can see that it's a really nice article. It answers the query in the first paragraph, which I think is very important when you are creating a response post like this. Nicely formatted, sticks to the point, it's got no waffle and yeah, it's a really nice article. So let's start by getting a benchmark and running this through those four tools to find out if they can determine that it is human content. Let's start with originality.ai. Here we go. And well, it was pretty spot on. It said it is 98% human, which I think it's actually 100% human, but, but I'll take that. That's good enough for me. And it also detected that it's 100% plagiarized, which of course it is because this article is already published on my website, bestcornpopper.com. And it highlighted that and it gave me a link to the original article. So, so far, so good. The next tool I ran it through is the one from Content at Scale, which is the free tool. And this came back saying that it's 100% human, which of course it is, so uh, that's perfect. Third one is the tool from Crossplag, and they detected 1% AI, which I think they do that on all articles, even if they're 100% human. So yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna take that as human. The final one is Sapling, which basically said, yeah, it's definitely human. It was, it was pretty, pretty sure that it was human written. So. That's all good. They all got that 100% right. So let's run the AI articles through the checkers and see what they come back with. The first one is ChatGPT, and you can see on the screen now how I generated the article and the prompt that I used. 
I asked the AI tools to give me a similar amount of words as the human article, basically just to try and keep things, you know, on an even keel. However, a lot of the AI tools struggled to produce an article that was that long. It was, I think, around 800 words. And yeah, a lot of the content created by the AI was a bit shorter. But you're looking at the ChatGPT article right now, and yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I like the title. It's kind of jazzed up the title a little bit, added a bit of extra stuff there. Uh, it's not that well written, to be fair, when you read it. It's got quite a bit of waffle in it. And it doesn't answer the title particularly quickly. I mean, it does answer it within the article towards the end. But as I said earlier, I think when you're doing a response post, you should really try and answer the question as quickly as you possibly can. So let's run it through some of those checkers. Let's start again with originality.ai and here are the results. And originality came back and said that it's 45% AI. Um, it passed the plagiarism uh, checker, which is fine. But yeah, 45% AI, well, that's not, that's not right because it's 100% AI. So unfortunately, originality kind of failed on picking that one up, which I thought was kind of weird because as you're about to see, ChatGPT seems to be very, very easy to detect. Um, See, so take a look at these. Here is content at scale, 100% AI. So yeah, perfect, that's right. Uh, cross plug, 100% AI. That's again, 100% correct. And then sapling was 99.99% .99 sure that it's AI. So yeah, it's AI. So three out of the four checkers got it right. Unfortunately, originality.ai kind of missed the mark. Okay, let's try the second uh, AI article, which is from Jasper. This article, by the way, was created using the chat feature of uh, Jasper. I used a very similar prompt to the chat GPT one to try and keep everything even. The article reads well. The question is answered in the first paragraph, so that's good. There's not too much waffle. It's concise. It's good. It's a good article. So let's run it through some of the checkers. Now, keep in mind, obviously, it is still 100% AI. I've not done any editing on the AI articles. Just put them straight in. Here's originality.ai's response. And unfortunately, it's, it's kind of missed the mark a little bit again. It's 50-50, it says. It's 50% AI, 50% human, which it's not. It's 100% AI. So a little bit of a fail there from originality. Content at scale, uh, got it completely wrong, said it was 100% human. Cross plug said it was 1% AI, so basically, yeah, 100% human again. And sapling was sure that it's real. So that's kind of interesting, huh? It shows that Jasper content is a lot harder to detect than chat GPT content. Hmm, interesting. Third article I've got is this one, which was by content at scale. I put the keyword in, pressed the button, bosh, it uh, generated this article. Slightly different to the chat uh, from Jasper and ChatGPT. Uh, it's a different kind of system. This one is designed for mass uh, content publication. But uh, the article is okay. I mean, it doesn't answer the question that quickly again. It reads okay. It does come with some nice formatting and stuff. And you, know, you can publish it straight to your WordPress site with a click of a button, which is kind of cool. But yeah, the article's not, not the best. Let's see what originality.ai thought of this article. Here's the results. And uh, originality thinks that it's, it's human, uh, which of course it's not. So originality got that bit wrong. Content at scale thinks it's human, which is kind of weird. It means that content at scale can't detect its own content. Uh, whatever, fair enough. Uh, cross plank said it was human as well and sapling was sure it was real. So content at scale content is undetectable, basically. All four of the tools completely got it wrong. They all thought it was human. So that's kind of interesting. If you're looking for an AI tool that creates content that cannot be detected, then content at scale might be for you. So there we go. That's all the popcorn articles done. Interesting outcome, a mixed bag of results from the checkers. Let's see how they do with the darts article. So here is the human darts article, which again is nice and concise. Uh, a little bit of keyword stuffing in that first line there, but you know, I'm okay with that. It does stick to the point and yeah, overall it's a pretty good article. So let's run it through the checkers to see if they can determine whether it is human, which of course it is. Here's originality, and originality said it was 37% AI, which I don't think that's right. I'm sure it's 100% human. And it did detect the plagiarism, but it got confused as to where it was copied from. It, it gave me the wrong URLs. Um, I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but it did detect that it was copied. 
Let's see what the content at scale. Check a thought. Here we go. And yeah, got it right. 100% human. Here's cross plague. Again, said it was human. And finally, here is sapling. And sapling was sure it was human. So they've all done pretty well there, apart from originality.ai, which didn't detect that it was 100% human and got the plagiarism link wrong. But at least it detected there was plagiarism, I guess. Now, with this article, when it comes to the AI, I did ask for eight tips uh, from the AI because the human article has eight tips. A lot of the AI tools did struggle <laughs> to give me the full eight tips, but we did get there in the end. Here is uh, the first AI article. This one is from ChatGPT. And um, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It reads uh, well. ChatGPT did give me the eight points, which is good. There wasn't a conclusion, but I guess I could have gone back to chat GPT and asked it to add one. And in fact, I did that and, and kind of pasted it on at the end. So let's see um, what the checkers think about this chat GPT article. Uh, here's originality.ai said it was 8% original, which is obviously uh, wrong. It's 100% it's, it's AI. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at content at scale. Detected that it was AI straight away. Cross plague the same, 100% AI. And uh, finally, with uh, Sapling, Sapling was pretty sure it was AI tool. Tool? Two, I mean. <laughs> so again, ChatGPT seems to be fairly easy for these tools to detect, apart from for originality.ai, which seems to be struggling. Moving on, here is the Jasper article. Uh, take a look. Uh, reads pretty well. It, again, gives all the eight points. Um, there was a few grammar issues, but that's fine because, you know, if I was going to be publishing these articles, I would be going through and making some edits anyway. Let's take a look at the results from the checkers. Here's originality.ai. Got it completely wrong. Let's move on. Content at scale said that um, it was human again. Got it wrong. It's obviously AI. Cross plague. Got it wrong. Thought it was human. Sap blang. Sap blag? Sap. I can't to talk anymore. Sapling. Got it wrong as well. So none of them were able to detect Jasper. Again, kind of proving the point earlier that Jasper is very hard to detect. Finally, we got the content at scale article, which is this one, which uh, was not a particularly good article. It didn't give me the eight points. Um, maybe I'm just using this tool wrong. I, I don't know, but it, it was unable to give me the eight points. But I used the article anyway, just because I was losing the will to live at this point <laughs> so, with this tool. So yeah, let's see what um, the, um, the tools, the checkers thought of this uh, article from Content Scale. Here's the first one, originality.ai. So it was 24% AI, which is wrong, it's 100% AI. The Content at Scale checker, again, can't detect its own content, said it was 100% human. The Cross Plag uh, checker thought it was human as well, and Sapling was sure that it was real. So content at scale does seem to be hard to detect as well. So that brings us to the end of our little scientific or not so scientific <laughs> test on these checkers. And basically the conclusion is these tools are not very good. They're not very good at detecting whether it's AI. They're pretty good at detecting whether it's human, I've got to say. But in terms of you know having some confidence when you look at an article and run it through on these checkers to know whether it's AI or human, these tools simply do not deliver that. But does it even matter? Does it even matter? I mean, maybe you want to use these checkers because you're ordering content from writers and you, you know, want to be sure that they're not using AI tools because they said they were going to write it by hand. Well, these tools are not going to give you that peace of mind. And there's a good chance that you run a piece of content through and the writer has used AI. And especially if they're using Jasper or something like that, you're not going to be able to pick it up. Or maybe you're thinking, I need these checkers because if it passes these checkers, then maybe Google won't be able to detect whether it's AI. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that because who knows how Google are gonna work out whether a bit of content is AI. And yeah, it doesn't matter anyway because AI is not a problem for Google. Google are happy providing the content is good and useful and answers the question and is of good quality. And they've said that AI is fine, providing you deliver on those things. It's basically just going back to the standard Google quality guidelines. Just create good content for humans, not for search engines. Don't be spammy just good content. And if you happen to use AI to help you do that, that's fine. So there we have it. I guess the final thought I want to leave you with is it has shown that ChatGPT, however cool it may be, and I do love ChatGPT, it is really cool. ChatGPT is really easy to detect. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, 
I don't know, I guess the jury's still out on that. But yeah, from a detector point of view, they are very good at detecting ChatGPT, but the other AI, not so much. So ultimately, the best checker that you've got for your content is you, or maybe your editor, or maybe someone else that works for you. But basically a human is the best checker. You need to read your content, you need to edit your content, you need to make it the best content it can be. And, and then you should be fine, you should be fine. I still think there's probably a benefit in plagiarism checkers, but whether originality.ai is that plagiarism checker, I'm not sure. I've been using Copyscape for a while and, and that seems fine to me. And in fact, you know, tools like Jasper, they have Copyscape built in. So you could just put content in there and, and check it that way. What are your thoughts on all this? Do you use a checker? Do you think they're a waste of time? Are they useful? Do we need them? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment below. I do read all the comments that I get and I will try to reply to as many as I possibly can. If you didn't click that like button earlier, maybe you want to click it now. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it. Click that like button. And to avoid missing any upcoming streams and future videos, click that subscribe button. But for now, good luck with your sights. See you later.